Disney Channel shows are regarded for their ubiquity and family-friendly content, promptly engaging multiple generations. While the premise of Disney Channel shows can be quite outlandish and whimsical at times, such as a teenage psychic with That's So Raven, or a magical family who can turn into mythical beings with Wizards of Waverly Place, there are often real-life lessons at the center of the wackiness, to ground the shows into relatable aspects for their audience. Disney is also a mega company synonymous with everyday life entertainment, and when it comes to Disney Channel shows, the creators of the shows often tie in real-life pop culture parallels to further engage their audience, and shows that the creators and writers of these shows have kept their pulses on what's hot and new, to keep their audiences reeled in. A lot of the real-life pop culture parallels are very blatant, and some of them are so well done you might not even notice. The Cheetah Girls The Cheetah Girls were an on-screen turned real-life group that went on to achieve tangible success on the charts and in sales figures. The Cheetah Girls consisted of Raven Simone who played Galleria, Sabrina Bryan who played Dorinda, Adrian Ballon who played Chanel, and Keely Williams who played Aqua. The Cheetah Girls marked a new era in Disney, and the first movie was the first Disney Channel original movie musical. The first film was released in 2003, and was an instant success. The immediate success of the Cheetah Girls would lead them to being turned into a franchise with various different forms of merchandise. The Cheetah Girls became a tween phenomenon with songs like Cheetahlicious and Cinderella, with familiar themes of girl power and inclusivity. They also had a real life and more adult parallel that was instantly noted by the media, and that group is the Pussycat Dolls. There are even similarities in their names, the Pussycat Dolls and the Cheetah Girls. They are also both multicultural and multi-ethnic girl groups that primarily focused on dance pop music as well as did a lot of choreography. Obviously the main difference is the Pussycat Dolls were more adult-centric in their themes and image. They literally began as a burlesque group. On the other hand, the Cheetah Girls were directly marketed to the youth and solely catered to the youth. They were essentially the perfect alternative for young people to enjoy, as opposed to the more mature topics and imagery of an act like PCD. In retrospect, the Cheetah Girls do indeed come across as a more PG-friendly alternative to groups like the Dolls, with a mix of that girl power spirit of the Spice Girls, and the Cheetah Girls couldn't come up at a better time in music. There weren't many girl groups in popular music in the mid and late 2000s that specifically catered to a younger audience, and Disney clearly filled that void. Madam Goo Goo, Ant Farm Ant Farm starring China Anne McLean is a show that always embraced contemporary music, even covering famed songs like Dynamite by Teo Cruz and Beautiful by Christina Aguilera. In season 1, a guest character named Madam Goo Goo seemed to be an obvious parody of Lady Gaga. Madame Goo Goo was known for her outrageous outfits that changed very quickly, a trait that Gaga built her career on. The writers of the show leaned so heavily into the Lady Gaga parallel that Madame Goo Goo even performed her song Born This Day on the episode. The episode was released when Lady Gaga's mega smash, Born This Way, ruled the charts. Cowbells Cowbells was the first collective Disney debut for sister duo Ali and AJ, who had experienced musical success with Disney before making their way onto the small screen. Cowbells arrived in 2006 and focused on two young rich girls who had a widowed dad that owns a huge dairy company. They are spoiled and irresponsible, eventually their dad gets tired of it and makes them go to work at the dairy company. They completely mess everything up, they dislike work, and are pretty terrible workers. But by the end of the movie, they come to appreciate work and the responsibility that comes with it. The plot might sound all too similar for 2000s culture, because it was essentially the plot and premise of the Simple Life reality TV show, starring Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie, two real-life spoiled blondes that come from well-established families that traded in their riches, at least for the show, to experience common life. In The Simple Life, Paris and Nicole mess a lot of work-related and everyday life things up, and although not as sweet as a Disney ending, they do come to appreciate some of the simple things they do. The parallels are uncanny, 
and are a true time capsule for mid-2000s pop culture. London Tipton The 2000s could not get enough of Paris Hilton, the reigning socialite of that era. She became the entire basis of London Tipton from the sweet life of Zack and Cody, even down to the name in their background. In this show, London Tipton's dad owned the Tipton Hotels. Similarly, Paris Hilton's family created the Hilton Hotels. London Tipton, played by Brenda Song, is a character that is extremely ditzy, self-centered, and spoiled. Characteristics that would come to define Paris Hilton during her prime, and that she immediately played into. Although London Tipton is a very obvious parody of Paris, London does have many layers in her personality as a character, and the character became the breakout star of the show. The character's popularity is an extension of the real-life popularity of Paris Hilton. Donna Cabana, That's So Raven Donna Cabana is a character in That's So Raven that was a worldwide fashion designer. She served as Raven Baxter's mentor and boss, and she was also the perfect gateway into Raven Baxter's character development and pushing Raven into accomplishing the dream she had wanted since she was young. Donna Cabana takes on many different formulaic characteristics of fashion moguls in movies and TV shows, to being rude, self-centered, and downright erratic at times. She eventually softens up to Raven and the world is let in on her more emotional side. Donna Cabana's name is a parody of real-life designers Donna Karen and Dolce & Gabbana. I think it's worth mentioning that Donna Cabana also became a regular character the same year The Devil Wears Prada debuted in 2006. Although Donna Cabana came beforehand, it shows that Disney and their writers firmly had their pulse on what's to come. Bizarre Vark Bizarre Vark was clearly Disney Channel's move into fully embracing the omnipresence of social media and pop culture. The entire premise of the show is two best friends who post videos online on their popular channel and have to share a space with others who do the same. It is a direct parody of the age of the influencer, YouTubers, TikTokers, Instagrammers, etc. It even has Jake Paul and Olivia Rodrigo in starring roles. The Lizzie McGuire Movie Lizzie McGuire was a milestone for Disney and helped set the template for Disney Channel stars in their career model, with Hilary Duff being the star and center of the title character. In 2003, at the height of Maguire mania, the Lizzie story came to the big screen and was a box office hit, a Disney Channel original movie like no other. Lizzie Maguire goes on a graduation trip to Rome. She accidentally meets Paolo Vallisari, who is a famous pop star. He mistakes her for a singing partner in Lizzie's doppelganger, Isabella Perigi. After finding out that they are two different people and they just have likeness, him and Lizzie grow closer. Lizzie eventually develops feelings for him. Paolo attempts to develop a scheme where he has Lizzie anxiously sing while she's impersonating Isabella to make it seem like Isabella is a fake. The scheme is revealed and instead Lizzie and Isabella end up exposing Paolo for lip syncing at the International Music Awards with Isabella and Lizzie eventually joining in song together. The plot parallels with the Milli Vanilli scandal are palpable. Even with Paolo and Isabella being a European singing duo that have a mishap at a popular music show just like Milli Vanilli, the writers and creators obviously turned the scenario into something more Disney-fied, but the parallels are still prevalent. Wizards of Waverly Place, Twilight, and Harry Potter Wizards of Waverly Place was one of the most wildly popular youth shows of the 2000s and early 2010s. It's about a magical family learning and progressing with their powers. The show would launch Selena Gomez into the stratosphere. Waverly Place's run occurred during the height of Harry Potter mania and during the height of Twilight craze as well. During the period of Twilight, the show would incorporate more wolf and vampire love connections. While a lot of the looks, aesthetics, and principles of magic in Waverly Place have immediate parallels to Harry Potter, Harry, Hermione, and Ron begin attending Hogwarts at a very young age, and similarly, Alex, Justin, and Max were young wizards in training, also two boys and one girl. In later seasons, we see Justin embroiled in a relationship with a vampire, Juliet, played by Bridget Mindler. On the other hand, we see Alex in a relationship with a werewolf. 
Both of these relationships have their soap opera-esque obstacles, but very obviously Disney-fied. The similarities make both couples feel like a more PG version of Bella Swan and Edward Cullen, 